Night has fallen and you're weary from travel. Stars fill the sky above, and in front of you is a brightly lit wooden house, the only building you've seen for days. You walk toward the house, hearing the sounds of laughter and talk as you reach the door and push it open. You sit down and join the game. It's a cheap buy-in, and not many of the other players are very good. The lady fiddling with dice gets good cards, but has no real strategy. The man to your right seems to just hold on to the highest cards he has, regardless of suit or any consideration of matches. The man in gray across from you, though, he's good. He already had the largest pile of coins when you bought in, and while your winnings grow quickly, you can't quite catch him. One by one, the other players leave the table, sometimes with peak or with wry humor, leaving their winnings with you or the man in gray. Finally, it's just you and the man in gray. He looks at you, full of humor and winks. Last hand? come every year, you know. The old man is sitting at the edge of a rotting old pier, crooked legs dangling over the water. He watches a pair of seagulls preen and groom each other on a rock just off the shore. They seem to wait for something together, fidgeting and rubbing against one another. And when they fly off, they fly together. These two, these same two, have been coming here ever since I was a boy, the old man says. He watches them fly away until their bodies are dots vanishing into the low sun. Always the same pair. Wonder what keeps him coming back to this town. He shrugs. I must be home. The woman walks the small town square with the poise of Betty Davis. A confident stride and inimitable mannerisms elevating the sidewalk into a plush Hollywood carpet and wrapped around her neck, a yellow velvet ribbon, bright as an ocean sunrise. You question a well-dressed man parked outside an oyster house. Prudish woman, I took her on a fine date and she didn't remove so much as a ribbon. Excuse me, can you step back from the coop? That's the spirit. You decide to seek a second opinion. You talk with a waitress smoking outside a diner. Something funny about her. Just showed up one day. Doesn't work, doesn't live anywhere as far as I know. Just around. Myself, I'd love to know who made all her beautiful clothes. You ask the woman if you may join her at a public bench. You may. Lovely outside, isn't it? Her eyes are a beautiful shade of brown. Beneath the yellow ribbon, a thick, fibrous scar wraps around her throat. 
Weather like this, it reminds me of Paris. You can see storm clouds on the horizon, and you don't relish the thought of being caught wandering this rocky seaside road in the rain. Fortunately, you find the lighthouse door open with a daunting staircase before you. At the top of an ornate wrought iron spiral, you're breathless and feeling the strain on your knees. Rain already batters the walls outside. You can only knock on a heavy wooden door leading into the upper level. Muffled voices and light seep in beneath the door. Looks like we got a visitor. Sounds like a man's voice, deep and rough. Well, behave yourself. I'll open the door. Another man. This one with a higher, more sonorous voice. I always behave myself. He feigns indignation, but his tone betrays affection instead. After a moment, the door unlatches from the inside and opens. The man before you is tall and muscular, with a hint of a paunch beneath his wide chest. The heavy iron knob on the door looks nearly dainty in his huge hand. Despite the rough exterior, this room looks like a well-appointed parlor. There's a rug on the well-trod wooden floor. A few years. The tall one sits on the sofa, wrapping his arm casually. You wake up the next morning on their old sofa, still warm from an This city is like no other you've been to. Crooked streets splay out in a maze of narrow passages, no two alike. Soon, you find yourself in twilight. Compelled by the cold and foreboding night, you don't question it as you drag your bones into the cab. But you realize immediately how strange the vehicle is. Where to? He asks. You have to stop and think. He takes you through ever odder streets, flanked by painfully clean, gleaming buildings, the fares in glowing numbers above his dashboard. It's much too high. Steep truck and a man on horse. The man with the truck leaps into the street. Brother! Everyone here is watching these two older men cry and hug one another in the middle of the long lost brothers pose in front of traffic.
As you walk along the river near an unfinished bridge, a man with a tool belt. Great! He exclaims. Suppose you'll want a safety belt. You find yourself up high, looking over the rushing river that crashes around. You ask him to explain. You only see the clouds thicken. Hey there, stranger. You're welcome to enjoy this fire with me, if you're respectful, that is. This here is my spot, and I ain't inclined to share it with any bad characters. You can call me Quinn. These here are my venturing companions. Kaz is the big un, and the one with the spots is Flip. I usually beat my way on the rails, but the road news said this town was fat, and the weather was fine. So I'm taking in the sights and seeing what I can drum up. I want to hear one of them venturing tales. Got any? What's the use in telling sweet happy tales if in the make you snooze? Well... I don't know a whole lot about the past, but they say there's an engine grave around these parts. Say it's haunted and full up with angry spirits. I used to love hearing stories of cowboys and engines fighting it up. Would swap tales with the youngins. But, well, I suppose if someone shot me, I'd be pretty vengeful too. Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Well, that was a lively tale. Freedom. Well, teacher used to talk about freedom like America was eat up with it. But the tramping kind seems to be just about the only real freedom still in supply. Ain't no freedom from an empty stomach or bad weather, unless you're rich. Hey, tell me one of those exciting stories. Twisters touch down in a cornfield, fence posts flying in its wake. God damn it, Bill! Another man hollers, clapping his hands to his hat to keep it from flying off. You follow the man and his hat into a root cellar. Bill's damn good with horses, but he's only happy when he's trying to tame something bigger than himself. I've met a lot of people like you on this road. There's something you want from it, isn't there? A desire that scratches and scrapes away at the sides of your body. Does being out here feed that part of you? It's that way for me, living in a state of motion, resting nowhere, returning to no one. I've been a wandering ghost for a while now, and I'll be that way for some time to come. But that's a fate I should have known I was in for. 
I'm a poet, after all. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? I don't think I'm in the intended audience for that joke. Faith. Hmm. You know the hardest person for anyone to have faith in? It's themselves. Sometimes I think there are things we know deep down are true, but we tell ourselves the opposite thing just to get away from having to face that truth. Have you ever done this? Sometimes you love someone and you tell yourself you don't. Sometimes you know something is right and you tell yourself it's wrong. You have to find some trust in yourself to understand it. Alone, out here, I spend too much time inside my own head. Can you tell me a hopeful story to lighten? Words are power, friend, so use them carefully. My first tip, avoid the maudlin. The space you give to love is the same space you open yourself up for potential harm. That's an old truism, and I'd read all about that kind of thing from an early age. So, it's not like it should have been a surprise to me. Still, I wasn't prepared for how much it all going sideways hurt me as much as it did. The way I felt about Silas wasn't like anything I could remember feeling before. The whiplash from that is why I'm out here by myself now. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? You're heading back out on the road? Well, good luck to you. Think about why you're out there, what you're looking for. Is it suffering that brought you here? Or is that what you're seeking? I'm taking myself and my thoughts down the road this way. It'll be a new place to see. Perhaps we'll cross paths again. I hope we do. I won't leave much to find again. Here you are again. Have you found what you're looking for? Do you even know what you're looking for? Track down that desire yet? I've been walking for a while, chasing desires of my own. Or running, maybe, from the things I've left behind. I need an optimistic story right now. Something to put a smile on my face. Can you think of any like that? Listen, these days, I can tell when a story's heartbreak isn't authentic. Freedom. Sometimes I feel like I don't know how to use it. When I consider my situation in the mornings, I mean, soberly, I know there's no way to 